Welcome back, everybody. This is episode 23. We're going to be playing a few sessions over at Grand Villa. Let's get straight into some hands. We've got Pocket Kings and Small Blind with considerable action before us. Under the Gun plus 2 is raised. Middle position is re-raised to 40. And then Button has called the 40. Um, definitely going to re-raise here. The sizing's a bit tricky. I go 165. I think this is a little bit big, but I don't know. I don't know about the sizing. Big blind folds, the original razor folds, the original three better folds, and the button decides it's time to go with it. He jams all in, we call, off to a, off to the races. King a5, it's no longer a race. <laughs> Turn is the four of spades, and the river is the eight. We show, and we are good. He says he has pocket fours, uh, I, don't, I don't really believe him though. But, good start to the session. All right, we're going to see a few dubious pre-flop calls coming up. In this first hand, middle position is raised to 15. We flat, and the big blind also comes along for the ride. So, three ways to a flop of 987 with a spade. Pretty good. Big blind checks, middle position bets 20. Uh, we're happy to just call in position here. I don't really want to raise. And big blind also comes along. So, off to a turn, which is pretty nice. Deuce of spades. Uh, this time it checks to me, and I'm just going to check this back. I don't think there's really much sense in betting. Our hand's pretty medium and can play pretty easily going across many rivers. So I might check it back. River is 10 of hearts. Pretty sweet. Now big blind leads out for $40. Middle position gets out the way, and I think that we have a clear raise for value here. Um, it seems like worst case scenario with this sizing, he's also got a jack. He's not going to fold the chop, but... Maybe it kind of feels like he's got a six or maybe some sort of two pair just trying to get to a cheap showdown. So we're not going to allow that. We make it 110 and he just goes, ah, really loudly, really exaggerated. And then after a little bit, counts out calling chips and then raises to 330. He's doing all the tells of I have a very strong hand. And now he's leaning back in his chair, he's not looking at the hand, he's on his phone, he doesn't care. And I just go, this is too obvious. I, I just feel like he's trying to give off a reverse tell here. Like, there's no way you just see this raise go, ah, like that loud, and just not know that this is a tell. Like, I just, I just think he's trying to give us like a reverse tell and he's bluffing us, trying to get us off a chop maybe, or using a hand like 10-9 as a bluff. But I don't know, I'm just not buying it. So I actually go ahead and toss in the call, even though it's really hard for me bluffing here. I don't know, man, just these live tells, but I toss in the call and he shows the queen jack. So those tells were just, unless he's doing a reverse, reverse tell, I don't know. Should have just folded. My bad. Okay, we've topped off and we are back to battle. We have ace 10 off in the low jack. I raise this up to 12 and I get two callers from the high jack as well as the big blind. So, three ways to a flop. It's pretty sweet. Ace jack, deuce, rainbow. Uh, big blind checks. I'm just going to check this back. It's nice to have some top pairs that we check back. And high jack also checks. So, off to the turn, which is the deuce of clubs. Pretty good. Big blind leads out for $10 here. Just going to call, and Hijack also makes a call. So off to a river, looking for a blank. It's pretty much a blank. Big blind checks this time. We're definitely going to go for some value here. Uh, I miscounted the pot. I thought it was $76, but it's actually 67 So I go and bet 80 which I thought was pot, but it's not. Uh, hijack folds, and big blind doesn't think for too long, and tosses in the call. I show, and we are good. Also, I didn't realize that I'm chopping with any ace here. <laughs> So we probably got value from a jack or a non-believing pocket pair. <laughs> Whoops. All right, in this next hand, we have seven six of spades, and we are once again going to make a very dubious call. The low jack has raised to 25. Open raise to 25. Cutoff is called. This is the same player who raised the jack-8 suited hand and the one that we just got value from, the last hand, ace-10. Just really want to play some pots with him. Uh, so I make the call with seven six of spades in the small blind. <laughs> Yeah, and big blind gets out the way. So three ways to a flop of jack, six, five, one spade. Check it over to him, and he puts out a bet about half pot for $40. Cutoff gets out the way, and we make the call. Off to a turn, which is pretty nice. Eight of diamonds, again, open-ender now. I check it, and he checks back. 
off to the river, which is a nine of clubs, so we make our straight. Uh, gonna check it over to him. It seems like he's gonna stab at this, so uh, I check and he bets a hundred dollars. Nice. Uh, he's only got maybe 200 ish behind, so I go ahead and jam all in. He doesn't think for too long and calls. We show and he shows pocket eights for a turn set. That one hurts, but nice to win that pot with a very, very questionable pre-flop call. In this next hand, we actually have a real hand. We got two limps and we got pocket queens on the button. I'm gonna raise it up to $18. Good news, small blind starts cutting out raisin chips. Looking to three bet and then realizes his stack isn't very big and just goes ahead and jams his $157 in there. Pretty sweet. We are definitely going to make this call button versus small blind against an aggressive younger gentleman. So I toss in the chips. King 8 6. Doesn't look great. Turns a four of diamonds. River is the four of hearts. I turn it over and unfortunately the opponent has pocket aces. We're not going to win that one. Little bit of a downgrade from pocket queens. We got pocket sevens next. Button straddle is live. Small blind under the gun and middle position have completed. We are going to raise this up. I make it $42. And we get no less than three callers. So we are four ways to a flop. Probably going to need to flop a set to win this one. <laughs> Nine four deuce. That's not a bad flop for pocket sevens. Uh, checks to me and with an overcard there and four ways. I think you could go either way, you know, bet protection makes sense, but I decide just to check it back. And we see the eight of hearts on the turn, not too great. Small blind checks again, under the gun player now bets for $75, just under half pot. Middle position folds, and I think folding here is totally fine, but this player just probes way too much. He could be doing this with a four, a deuce, pocket sixes or lower. Like he is just over probing, but he could also be betting an eight here. Definitely could be betting a nine here. Um, he's definitely not got anything like tens plus here because he would probably just donk shove that with his stack. I think he would do the same with a nine as well. So my read here is we're losing to an eight, but we're beating everything else that bets for this size. So I toss in the call. Unfortunately, small blind also goes all in for 78. Now we're just trapped and hopefully small blind is just on a draw. And under the gun calls, we call off to the river, looking for a clean one. So deuce of diamonds, pretty good. Under the gun now checks. He's only got $60 behind. And I just check it back. We show and we are good. Under the gun had pocket sixes. <laughs> See, he was probing too much. I knew it. Very nice to take that massive pot down with sevens. All right, this is one of the silliest hands I've played. Uh, we have four limbs. We have jack four off in the big blind. Just going to check it back. And we see a flop of... Jack, 10, 5, 2 clubs. My hand's not strong enough to lead out here, so I just check it. Checks all the way to the button, who bets $11. Uh, he's only got about 30-something behind, so I'm very happy to get top pair in, all in against him. Especially when players on the button will bet any pair here. So I re-raised to 35. Now under the gun, over calls, which is concerning. Middle position fold, hijack folds, and then button jams for 42. We both call, the doors not open. And I'm wondering what I'm going to do on the turn. <laughs> Until the turn's another four. So we make two pair. Uh, now I know that this player really likes to call draws for any size. So I'm going to size up here. Um, I think I actually made this too small in practice. I made it 105. I'm pretty sure I could have gone like 150 and he was still called. And sure enough, he does call pretty quickly. So we're hoping for a brick river. Or even better would be the jack of clubs. Jack clubs be amazing because that's what we get. <laughs> we, we river a full house and he probably completed his flush. Um, if he's got a flush, he's never folding. So I jam all in. Unfortunately, he folds right away. Uh, he's told me he had king queen. And so it looks like we're going to win this one until the button shows. Jack five of diamonds <laughs> for higher boats. Uh, good news is we won about, I think, like $60 on the hand. So... Ah, not bad. Okay, in this next hand, there are two limps and we have queen jack of clubs in the cutoff. I raise it up to 18 and get no less than three callers. So, four ways to a flop, which comes out pretty good. King 10-4 with one club. 
Checks to me, I start off the small bet at 25, button folds, and now under the gun decides that's not enough and sticks his whole stack in there. Middle position folds, and I'm pretty sure we have the odds required to call this. Kind of sucks, but we pretty much have to call. So I toss in the chips. Turn is the three of diamonds, no help, and the river. It's a five of spades. My opponent rolls over. King nine. <laughs> He got called by the one hand we can't bet fold. At ace jack, ace queen, those both bet fold. All the other hands that I bet just crush king nine. <sighs> that one hurts. That one hurts. On to the final session here. We pick up ace three suited in the big blind. The button straddles on, small blind has completed. I raise it up to 25. The lady to my left calls and it folds around to a guy on the other side of the table who Originally grabs calling chips and is about to call and then takes it back, grabs another 50 and re-raises 75. Hmm, weird. Uh, folds back to me uh, for this price. Uh, in retrospect now, I actually really like just jamming here. Pretty flop, I think it's gonna get a lot of folds. But for this price, I'm definitely not folding and I'm sensing like a lot of weakness in this play. So I'm curious. And so I call under the gun, gets out the way. So we are heads up to a flop of 10, 7, 4, 1 club. I check it and he bets 50. And I should have been paying more attention to a stack to see how short it was after this bet. But I'm still just not believing. And I think that I can get him off his hand. This is a bit silly, but I'm just really not believing. You know, I just don't think he's got a hand. I call just to float. Turns another 7. Uh, I check it over to him and he checks it back. So River is the deuce of spades and I think it's about time to bluff now. So I stick it all in. He's thinking for a while. He's really torn between calling and folding. But eventually his stack was just too short and he just gives it a sigh, whatever, calls and shows the pocket eights. My read was right, but I wasn't paying attention to his stack size. That one's my fault. That should have been a jam pre-flop or just a give up on the flop or just fold pre. Yeah, not liking how I played that one even though my read was pretty on point there. Oh, there are so many straddles this game. Button straddles live, small blind and big blind have completed. We've got king jack suited. We're gonna bump this up to 30. And the button calls as well. No, I think that's it. No, yeah, small blind also calls. So we're three ways to a flop. It is beautiful. King four deuce, two diamonds unreal checks to me i'm gonna start with a small bet of 30 only the button calls here so heads up to the turn which is the seven of hearts i uh, don't really know if we're gonna get value from a worse king for three streets betting still makes still definitely fine but i'm gonna check and see what button does he checks back behind pretty quickly so off to a river which is a queen of spades it's pretty good it makes king queen less likely so i'm gonna go for value it seems like he's only got a pocket pair here I would expect him to bet a king on the turn, so I don't think I can go too big. I just make it 60, and he doesn't think for long, and calls. We table our hand, and it's good. In this next hand, we're facing two limbs. We got 10 8 of diamonds in the cutoff, make it $18, and we go three ways to a flop. Sorry, four ways to a flop, which comes down, bleh. Queen 9, 5, 2 spades, checks to me. I'm done with the hand at this point, so I just check it back. But the river comes pretty nice. Six of clubs, so now we pick up a double gut shot. Uh, under the gun leads for 25. He really likes these like very small 20 or $25 leads, so I don't put too much stock into it. Under the gun plus two calls, I call, and the button folds. So three ways to a river, which is pretty good. It's a four of clubs, so the board's getting really disconnect or really connected here. Uh, now they both check to me, and this is just a green light to go ahead and bluff. The board is so connected. The flush draw got there. I can credibly rep a flush here. So I size up to 110. And he thinks for quite a while before deciding on a fold. Under the gun folds pretty quickly as well. So we're going to take that down with 10 8. Yeah, nice. Button straddles on again. Small blind, big blind completed. We have ace, eight of diamonds next to act. I raise it up to $30. And we get two callers before the small blind decides. He's going to limp shove all in. Big blind gets out the way. Now it's on to me. Um, with all that dead money, I'm only calling 120 to win 250. Like, there's just no way I can fold this. So I reshove all in. 
uh, middle position folds and button folds as well. So we're off to a flop of Jack five, four, two diamonds. Looking good. Turn is the king of hearts and immediately he picks up his cards and starts standing up. So we need some help. River is no help. The queen of spades and he shows the king queen of diamonds. I hate all ends pre-flop. We're going to try again with a suited ace. Still diamonds. Uh, we've got a limper. We're going to raise this up to $15. And we get two callers from the cutoff as well as the original limper. So three ways to a flop of queen, queen, eight, two diamonds. Under the gun here leads for 15. Could raise, but I'm ne never going to queen to fold. So I just call and cut off folds as well. Off to a turn, which is pretty nice. Deuce of diamonds. We get there right away. Uh, he sizes up to $50. He's only got 55 behind. I don't think he's folding after he's making this bet, so I just quickly announce all in. And to my surprise, he folds. He folds for $55. What? <laughs> Not going to get max value that hand. Okay, this is the final hand. Button straddles once again live. Uh, big blinds completed. We have ace king. We make it 25. Player to my left folds, and the player after that makes it 75. It was quite a tight player, so this is a little bit concerning. Folds back round to me. I look over to stack, and he's only really got about $200 there that I can see. So with the button shuttle on, this is like 30-something big blinds. We're just going to have to go with it. It kind of sucks against this player, but we jam all in. He snap calls. Not great. Off to a flop of 10, 7, 4, 2 spades. It's not looking good. Turn, however, king of diamonds. Could be good. River is a jack of clubs. We show, and he shows the pocket queens. We want it all in. Yes. <laughs> Great way to end the session. It's going to bring us just up over even for a little bit of a profit. That's episode 23. Thank you so much for watching. We did not play our best. <laughs> that was maybe my B or C game. Can't always be on it every day, but is what it is. Uh, we played three sessions. The first one we were in for 600 out for 596 for a loss of $4. Uh, then we were in for 400 out for 349 for no 359 for a loss of 41 and finally in for 800 out for 870 for a win of $70. Meaning that we won a total of $25. That is a poke bowl at the casino. Pretty good. Uh, that's gonna bring the bankroll from 3657 all the way up <laughs> to 3,682. That's where we're going to end off. We're going to play better in the next episode. And thank you so much once again for watching. See you then.